Mr. President, we Mr. Virtual President. Mr. Virtual President, we live very close to the border. What would you do about securing our border and immigration? Imagine a country. Imagine a country where not only are the borders secured by armed guards, but once you entered the country, if you even spoke about politics at all, if you even mentioned anything politically, you would be deported. Imagine a country where everyone's required to be tracked all the time, where all, of these, where all of these immigrants are constantly monitored. Imagine where the idea of immigrants just even having a word on the, on the internal politics of a country would be enough to get them de deported. I can imagine a country like that. That country's Mexico. <laughs> now, we're told that a border, a fence, makes us like communism, that we've got a fence now. We've got a border, a wall around America. Well, there's a fundamental difference between a wall. Some kind of walls are designed to keep people in. That's a prison. And some kind of walls are designed to keep people out. That's a fortress. We have the, this insanely open border where anybody enters all the time. And we're told by the president during his inauguration that we shouldn't close off immigration to all oh, engineers and doctors and stuff. And I'm sure if you sit there on the border of Arizona or California, you see nothing but engineers and doctors <laughs> coming over every single night, ready to provide engineering and doctoring to, uh, to America. People laugh. People laugh because it's absurd. And it is absurd, but this is kind of the point, isn't it? So let me say a couple things about immigration and why we need to secure this border. The first thing I'll say about immigration is this. Everybody in America is an immigrant. And I have never seen people who are more pro-immigrant than people in the Tea Party and in conservatives. I, have, I see Tea Party conservatives cry at the thought of people raising their hand and swearing to be American citizens. And people who get through this process are as American as the people who got off the Mayflower. But the entire purpose of this argument is we are not anti-immigrant. We are anti criminal. We are anti-illegal immigrants. And let me explain to you what the difference is since there's a big cognitive problem out there among the press corps. So let me see if I can make this clear to you. Illegal immigration is not just a slap in the face. It is a spit in the eye of every single legal immigrant who throughout the world has spent seven, eight, ten years of their lives, thousands and thousands of dollars, have done everything exactly right in order to come here permanently and become a new person, a new American, just like the rest of us. Not a hyphenated American, an American. They are Americans who were born overseas. Ronald Reagan talked about these people who were hurtling through the darkness towards home. I understand this better than anybody. People who legally come to America, who go to that kind of trouble and leave their entire lives behind are actually the best Americans they are, that, that, that there are. They pass a test that most of us couldn't pass. They've given up everything to come here, everything to come to America. They're the best Americans they are. Now, if you really wanted a great country, for every legal American that came into the country, we should be able to deport a Berkeley professor, but that's not within my power. So. Illegal immigration is spitting in the eye of every single person who wants to come here for the right reasons. But I'll go further than that. Why do people come to America in the first place? Why? Why does every single person in the world want to come here? Well, they're fleeing something. And it's usually one of two different things. They're either fleeing economic conditions, as in the case of Mexico, or they're fleeing political oppression, as in the case of Mexico. But, <laughs> but think about this. What is it they're fleeing? They're fleeing lawlessness. Their economies are run by graft. It's all just one giant cronyism. It's totally corrupt. Their political repression means that they'd like to live in a place where somebody doesn't have the authority to kick their doors in and take them out and murder at nighttime. They want to come to a land of laws. They want to come to a land where the economy is ruled by law and the politics is ruled by law and you're protected by rights. But if the first thing you do in terms of escaping lawlessness, is to break the law? Aren't you bringing with you everything that you're running from? Aren't you, in fact, bringing everything that you're running from with you to this place that you're trying to escape to? There is a solution to the Mexican problem. I'm totally in favor of guest worker programs completely. And if you think about it, this is a really, really remarkable thought that not many people have. If an immigrant wasn't a burden on society, if there wasn't all of these schools and hospitalizations, all this other stuff, we can have as many as immigrants as we want. 
if we, if we, as long as we could keep hiring, we bring them in. And when we ran out of jobs, off they go. Guest workers, there may be a place for guest workers. But listen, this border has to be secured because this problem is out of control. And, and the real issue, the heartbreaking issue is, which is, of course, how Democrats work. They find, the, they find the heartbreaking issue, and they make that the case, is what do you do with a kid who's been here for 18 years, whose parents came here illegally? Do you ship them back? They don't even speak Spanish, half of these kids. We have to be practical. We have to be reasonable. And I think the deal may be that you grant those people amnesty, but they get the amnesty after the border is secured and not before. Because if we don't secure the border first, if we don't stop it first, we're going to get more and more and more of what we got in the first place. No, no, we're just going to let it happen this time. No, we're, no, we're going to make an amnesty this time, 6 million amnesty, 20 million amnesty, 50 million amnesty. No, it's got to stop. It's got to stop now. This is not anti-immigrant. We want all the immigrants we want. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what kind of immigrants I would take right now. In France, in France, they have raised the tax rate to 75% on people making more than 1 million euros. You know who's left France? Think about this. Gerard Depardieu has left France, and Nicolas Sarkozy has left France. Gerard Depardieu is an actor, but he is the embodiment of France. He's their John Wayne. Sarkozy has left France. He's their former president. So think about a world where John Wayne and Ronald Reagan leave America. Leave America. That's how bad they are. So when we say we're anti-immigrant, we're not anti-immigrant. For instance, I would say to every single person in France who's got a business, I'd say, you can come to America right now. Bring your money, bring your skills, bring your employees, bring your businesses. You can live here as American citizens. Your top tax rate will be 15% on your corporations, and you can live here as free people. Come on over. The water is great. And we would have all of this money, all of the skills, all of these abilities. America should be the great place for people with brains and money to come to. We used to be that case. And when it says we accept, when we say give us your huddled masses, it doesn't say just give us only your huddled masses. We should be able to take some people with some skills, too. They're real people, too, you know, people who've worked their entire lives and worked hard and built up a business and, a, and, a, and some capital and, a, and an education. Next question. <laughs> 